please raise your hand if you can hear us. Thank you, thank you. Uh, there is still people that doesn't raise your, uh, their hand. If you can hear us, uh, please raise your hand so we can know that everyone uh, have a, the, the audio working. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. We will start uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, we're just waiting for all the, the people to uh, to access the webinar. Uh, I will give them just a couple of more minutes. Thank you for joining. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, I wasn't here. Uh, I lower all hands, we'll start now. Uh, just again, the same exercise. If you can hear me, please raise your hand again because there is people that join after I ask you to raise your, raise your hands. Okay, perfect. It seems that everyone can hear us. So let's start. Uh, 
Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for joining uh, this webinar. Uh, in this occasion, we want to present you our Quacklink management system. Um, our Quacklink management system is a software suite uh, that's a secure and remote system for the management of the Quacklink devices. Uh, my name is uh, Fernando Perez Castillo. Some of you already know me. I'm the international technical support for Quacklink. Uh, I'm in charge basically of the entire uh, global FA team for Quacklink. And it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, we're, we're going to talk about the functions of the QMS, what you can do on the QMS, the use cases, and the architecture of the system. Um, you can, uh, we will have a section for Q&A. But during the webinar, you can ask questions. Uh, please uh, try to use the Q&A uh, section and not the chat. Uh, we have our team in, here in Mexico and in US, our engineering team ready to answer your questions. So thank you, thank, thank you very much. Okay, what is QMS? Uh, the QMS, as I said, is the Quacklink management system. It's a software suite that we developed to help you to manage in an easy and secure way the configuration updates and firmware updates of the devices. Uh, this is just a, a, a suite that automates all the, the embedded features that we have in the devices. So we had these mechanisms in the device for firmware update and remote configuration update for a very long time. It's a very robust mechanism. But now the QMS, what we were lacking was a, a good software or a good tool that can help customers to, to manage the devices more easily and in a friendly way. Uh, one, one thing that uh, about the QMS is that the QMS is a platform that is self-hosted. Quacklink doesn't host the platform, but instead we install all the suite, all the system in your own servers. Uh, it could be in a cloud server, AWS, we have deployments in Azure. It can be on-premises, a dedicated server, a virtual machine. And with the QMS, you can uh, do uh, batches, uh, upgrade uh, the firmware of batches of devices, one device or groups. Uh, and, and, and also you can have an access control and audit trail of what the, the users are doing on the QMS and which devices. So as I'd say, uh, it's a managed platform and it's not, the, the device have two separate connections. When the devices are reporting it will create one connection, the normal connection for your tracking platform for all the reports, uh, telemetry, location. Uh, you can still use your own platform for configuration of the devices, like sending the RTO commands to enable an output, an input, or request the actual location. But for the QMS, it will create a separate connection to that server. And it's using a, a special protocol, uh, similar to the existing protocol, the track protocol to the backend server, but just dedicated for the QMS with some specific information and commands that are only available from the QMS server. And all this data, of course, the device sends the data to the QMS and it's converted to the, the protocol of the, of, the, of the server of the QMS. On QMS, we can do the, the users can do device grouping. You can group devices by firmware type, uh, by configuration. You can create different kind of uh, groupings for the devices. Uh, you can also assign different users to access or cannot access these device groups. We have a file management. You can upload different configuration files, uh, different versions. Again, by device type, or uh, you can have a description or a name, and you can have some, some different uh, configuration version for the same type of devices. And for the, the firmware upgrade as well, you can have all these 
uh, configuration or sorry, firmware files in the system available for each device model or each device type. Then of course we can do the configuration updates, the firmware upgrades, and we have a simple dashboard with all the information about the, the, the devices and the tasks that are running and very specific details uh, or detailed, uh, detailed view of the devices. The last time where the device uh, had a valid GNSS fix, the ICC ID, the battery level, uh, external power supply, GNSS, uh, sorry again, uh, network uh, connection, signal strength, et cetera. Okay, let's jump into the, the functions and the web UI. The web UI, it's very simple. The first thing that you will see is the dashboard and you have a navigation panel on the left where you can access all the different sections. There are, main, there are eight main sections in the QMS, the dashboard, the administration panel, device panel, tasks, files, commands, statistics, and log. From the dashboard, it provides a simple summary of over, or overview of all the tasks that are running and the result. Uh, if they are still pending, they failed, or it finished success, successfully. Also, you have the total number of devices that are registered on the system or that have been reporting in the last three days, eight days, 30 days, or if it's a new device or have an issue, it will show in the device uh, of, for the last 30 days. So you can have a quick overview of what is happening with all your devices from the dashboard, at least in terms of the tasks. Uh, in the administration section is where the super admins or the administrators of the system will add their users. Uh, we have a, a structure where you can have organizations. An organization could be a different department within your organization, your, your company, or uh, in the case uh, of distributors, or if you want to allow your customers, you can create an organization for your customer. And they will only have access to the devices under that organization. Or uh, there are different roles. Uh, the roles is a uh, you can create different permissions and you can allow certain roles to have access to everything in the organization or only for the devices and resources assigned to that user. So for the roles, you can have a very simple role like a viewer that can only see the dashboard, uh, the task list, and maybe the log without any other permission than just to access that and see it doesn't create a task, cannot hold files, then you get and you can have another role where it's the, the uploader of the firmware files and configuration files, then another role that is only to create tasks. So you can have all this flexibility so to have a better control and audit trail of who is doing what and to which devices. Then under the administration, there is a couple of uh, uh, things that you can configure in the system, like the, the timeout for the tasks. Uh, if a task, a ta normally the, the timeout is two days. If the, the device doesn't check in into the QMS for uh, those two days, the, the task will expire. But you can have a, a customized timeout. You can change that up to 30 days. Uh, there is also the section to a device series or device types. So you can add by yourself all the devices that you, all the different models from QuackLink uh, into your QMS by yourself. And then you can authorize the different organization to access some of, or all of the devices. So if you have one customers that have only the GB100MG, for example, and the GL500, you can only authorize those devices to that organization. Uh, by the way, we are showing clips of the full demo video. We will, uh, yeah, that they, they already said that in the chat. 
uh, you can have the, the QR code at the end of the presentation to access the full demo video. Okay, from the devices. Uh, from the device type is where you can add devices. You can add devices manually, uh, but you can also have a bulk import using, uh, using a CSV template. So you can get all the IMEIs and the device names, put that into the, into the CSV and import all the devices at once. Uh, by default, when you import the devices using the CSV file, they, all the devices will be assigned to the default group. Uh, and then on their device groups, there is another template that you can use to massively move the devices to different groups. So you can have all the IMEIs, uh, that you want to move to a specific group in that CSV file and then move it uh, to that group. Uh, on the web UI, you can only move devices to different groups one by one. Using the template, you can, uh, you can uh, move all the devices at once to different groups. Uh, on their devices, on their the, the device uh, tab, you can see all the devices, the last time they are reporting, but if you expand the, the details of the device, you can get more detailed information, uh, like the main power status, the actual configuration, the actual firmware, what was the last firmware, if it was uh, upgraded, you will see what was the last version and when that happens. The same for the configuration, but it's only the last one. So if you have one device with AC01 and then you upgrade the device to AC02 and then again to AC03, in the message that you are getting uh, on the QMS, you will only see one you upgrade from two to three and that the last version was version two. So just the last one. Uh, but so it gives you uh, a lot of information about the device. You can see the ICCID, uh, the well, all, all the version about the, the device, all the versions about the device, the hardware version, the, the firmware and the configuration. Now on the tasks, <clears throat> for the task section is where you create a file. Before you can create a, uh, you create a task, you need of course to add the devices to the QMS and you need to upload the files, the configuration files, and the firmware files. There is another section dedicated for the files. Uh, and then you need to specify, for example, in case of the firmware, what's the start version of the firmware and the end version. That means the actual version that the devices are reporting with, <clears throat> and then the version you want to the devices to be upgraded to. And that, that file will be only available for the devices that match that start version. Uh, when, when the task is created, either for the, for the firmware or the configuration, you can specify if you want to start a task immediately <clears throat> or you want to schedule that task to, to be uh, executed uh, at a certain time, in a certain day, and then is when the, the, the QMS will start the task. When in the QMS we see the status running, it means that the task is running, but that doesn't mean that it actually sent the command to the device, <clears throat> sorry. Because the idea is that the devices will be reporting once a day or twice a day to the QMS. And uh, the, 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 all the commands for the tasks will be in a message queue, in the command queue. As soon as the devices checks in into the QMS, it will set the, the system will send the command to the device. And that is when the, the status will change to all the different status that we have. Uh, send, receive, start download, start update, and at the end, if it's successfully or it fails. So when it's running, it means the task is running, but doesn't mean that the process on the device started. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, ah, well, it's showing right now in the video. When, when uh, in, in the device section, you can open the messages that the QMS received 
and you can go to the GTUPC, that it's for the configuration upgrade, or GTUPD, that's for the firmware upgrade. And then you can have a, specific, a breakdown of the message, the actual message that was received on the server. And that's because under the task tab, you can see uh, a description of an error. For example, if the, the task failed, it will tell you, okay, it fails because uh, it cannot download the file, right? But then if you go to the details of the message, you can see the error codes and the error codes uh, could be more uh, useful to troubleshooting if the device cannot download the file, for example, from the HTTP server, or there is a mis mismatch in the checksum uh, of the file or the command, and you can get more specific details from, from those codes. Uh, the codes are described in the documentation of the device under the, the PDF related to the firmware upgrade process. And all the codes are uh, specified there. Basically are the same codes for the firmware upgrade and the configuration upgrade. Uh, it is possible to restart a subtask. Uh, when, when you go to the main task tab, you will see a list of all the tasks that, it's run, that they're running. But that doesn't tell you if it's one device or 2,000 devices. If you open the details, you will see these small list like on here uh, with all the devices in that task. So if the tasks fail and you open these details, you can see that one is running, one start the update, another one running, running, and these failed. So you can see the details clicking on this icon, but you can also just select this device and restart that subtask without the need to restart the entire task. If there is a device that already finished the task successfully, you don't need to restart the entire task, just restart the devices that fails. Okay, this is the section that I mentioned before that it's uh, to upload the, and manage the firmware and config files. Uh, the files are stored in the, there is an HTTP server on the on QMS uh, system on, on, on the suite. And by default, we are using the embedded HTTP server. If needed or desired, and even if you are not using AWS, we have the option to use the S3 bucket as well. Uh, that's just for the storage of the files. Uh, when you upload a firmware file, for example, you need to specify the name, device type, what's the, the, the type of the update. For different devices, mainly you will update the baseband. Baseband is the same as the, our application firmware. There are some devices that you can upgrade the modern firmware. Uh, in the case of the MG devices, the B96 firmware. Uh, in some of the devices, you can also upgrade the Bluetooth firmware, the OBD firmware, the microcontroller, the MCU. Uh, and, and those are separated. You can have different files to update those devices, and you need to select the correct update type. Then, as I mentioned before, there is a start version and end version. So the devices that match these start version are the only devices that will be shown on there in, in the task list. And end version, of course, is the target version, the version you are upgrading to. Uh, the same for the, for the configuration. You need to specify a device type, then a name, and upload the file. And that file will be only available for that specific device type. Uh, okay, we have a command section in the QMS, but these commands, um, well, just to be very clear, uh, the command section in the QMS is just for the QMS commands. There is a set of commands uh, that are specific for the QMS, like the command to set up the, the connection to QMS, IP, port, and reporting interval. Then 
to start a firmware upgrade, configuration upgrade. There are a couple of real-time operation RTO commands specific for the QMS request configuration. Um, and those are the only commands that are supported here. Uh, there are the, the, the protocol commands, like the ones that you sent from your backend server are not all supported on QMS. And that's because the idea of the of QMS is that the devices again checks in once a day, twice a day, and not to be changing the configuration dynamically or in real time. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, statistics. From the statistics, you can see what the each user uh, have assigned. So the number of devices that that specific user have assigned, uh, how many firmware tasks they already performed, configuration tasks, uh, to which organization they belong, when was created, what was the last logging time, and the last operation time, the last operation they do in the system. Then the old log is where all the, the, the users, uh, you, can, you can follow and audit what every user is doing. For example, when the user, the user log in at a group, at a task, they add a device, they delete a device. So you can have all these audit trail. Use cases. Uh, again, uh, as I mentioned before, QMS is not or was not designed to be a real-time backend server uh, because you don't need to be upgrading the firmware of the devices all the time. And one of the use cases is a massive reconfiguration of what we call the static configuration. So the global configuration, it could be a migration to a new server, the backend, uh, the board, or to enable or disable some features. Uh, but again, just those static configurations that doesn't change very often. If you need to change dynamically the configuration of the device, like the report frequency or inputs, outputs, uh, specifically outputs for the GB series, uh, you might want to use your backend server because your devices will be connected to the backend server much more often or in real time. And of course, there is always the option to use SMS as a mechanism to send commands to the devices. Uh, massive firmware upgrade campaigns. If you need to upgrade the firmware of the devices to a new version, either because our new functionality, it's a bug fix or you, you need to upgrade the devices. That's what the QMS is for. Then of course, there is a use case where there is an initial provisioning. You can have the devices, uh, well, that's something that you will need to discuss with your, with your sales managers. But for example, if the, the devices are pre-configured with at least the APN and the QMS information, then you can create a task for the initial provisioning with all the script that you want to load into those devices. So by the time that you receive the devices, you turn on the devices, they will check in into QMS, and then it will get the initial configuration. Then you will be sure that the devices have the configuration you want. And there is no mistake or someone needs to load the incorrect file. So you, get, you can have more control about that. And we have some customers doing that for the initial provisioning. Uh, again, as I mentioned, it's a self-hosted platform. We'll be installing your own server on the cloud or uh, on-premises. And these are the minimum server configuration requirements. Uh, there are different distributions of Linux, different flavors. Uh, of course, we can support other distributions. We have uh, customers using uh, Amazon Linux or Ubuntu. What we recommend and that we want to stick with because it's more easy for us to help you and for the uh, when, when support is required is to go to CentOS 7 or superior. And then these are the minimum hardware specs 
four core CPU with a maximum frequency of three gigahertz, then uh, 16 gigabytes uh, of RAM, uh, hard disk, uh, 500 gig uh, gigabytes is more than enough. Uh, you will have a lot of uh, space, but that's mainly for the database because, uh, and, and the files, of course, when you, you upload the files. Uh, the system, the entire system is not more than two gigabytes, I believe. Uh, but this is just for data, basically. Uh, this is a quick overview of the system architecture and what's the, the, the workflow when you do a task or you want to upgrade the firmware configuration of the device. So everything starts with the user uploading a configuration or firmware file using the, the web UI, our web application. Then after the firmware or the configuration file is uploaded, you create a task. Then from the web app or our uh, web application, we have our QMS core. That's basically where everything is processed and stored. So it, it receives the request from the user to create a task. Then if the device is connected, to the QMS gateway, the QMS core would pass the command immediately to the gateway to be sent to the device. If not, it will be stored in the message queue and wait for the device to check in, then to send the command to the device. Then our QMS gateway, that is the listener, who support TCP IP and UDP IP, will send the command to the device, wait for the acknowledgement. It cannot get the acknowledgement, it will retry the next time the device checks in. If for some reason the device just send the command, the report to the QMS and cannot get the command, the QMS will retry three times. And if cannot get this, the, the acknowledgement, it will try to send again three times when the next time the device checks in. Then the device will receive the command, send the acknowledgement and start requesting the file to our QMS core. That means it will try to download the file from our HTTP server or S3 bucket, download the file. And once the file is downloaded and the device can confirm that the file is correct, the integrity, everything is perfect, is when it start the upgrade, the upgrade process. After the upgrade process finished, the device will send back its report to let the, the QMS gateway and the core, the status and the result of the task. Then QMS gateway will send the messages uh, directly to our data parser. That is the tool that receives the, the raw messages from the devices and parse them and analyze them. And basically update the status to the, to the core and the core shows that into the web UI. So update the status to the user. And of course, at the same time that we're sending that to the users in the web app, we're storing the results and the messages in the, in the database. So this is a, just a, a very high level uh, overview of the architecture. So we have a web application, we have core, we have a message queue, we have a listener, a data parser and a database. Okay, uh, before going into the commercial part, uh, sadly, uh, our uh, commercial team was not able to join, they are traveling, and this week we have our planning sessions in China, so they were not able to, to participate on, on this meeting now. Uh, I will talk about commercials in a second. In the meantime, I want just to preview your questions, and if you have more, I see that the team already answered many questions, actually. <laughs> Uh, okay, are there any plans to make mass device movement easier on QMS instead of import? Like passing list of IMEIs in the IMEI field and then move those selected devices to specific groups. Right now, the web UI doesn't allow, you, uh, allow us to do that. Uh, we need to specify the devices one by one and then the group and or use the uh, the template to do that 
uh, action. But one thing about the new version of QMS is that we already released an API, a REST API, that you can use to interact with QMS from your own applications or systems. So you can do an integration of your existing CRM or any other uh, software you have. And using the REST API, you can add devices, you can move devices to different groups, uh, you can create users, you can create tasks, you can even upload the files using the, the API. So that's something new uh, on QMS. And some of uh, our customers are already using the API or testing the API that's available right now. So let me check the other answers. Um, okay, the team already answered. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are no more open questions right now. If you have more, I will answer them gladly. But let's jump uh, into commercial. There is a. This is a commercial scheme, and this is the standard quotation. So the initial setup fee, or or the license and installation fee is a one-time fee of $20,000. And then there is an optional fee for jelly maintenance uh, of 10,000 per year. Uh, that's entirely optional. So the initial 20,000 grant, uh, grant you the license and we will renew the license every year because the licenses are generated uh, to be valid for one year. Uh, if you don't pay the, the optional fee for the maintenance, uh, we will just renew the license for you. There is no extra cost uh, after those 20,000. This is just in case we will support the maintenance of the server. We encourage customers to do the maintenance and the administration of the server by themselves. We don't want to have the responsibility uh, of your data and your infrastructure. At the end of the day, we can, we can provide all the support. Uh, initially, we request access over SSH to do the installation, deployment, configuration, testing. And after that, we ask the customers to remove the SSH access for us. Uh, we don't want to, to, to be in a position where we can do something uh, with your data. And that's, that's why we decided to, to have this uh, approach with QMS, that it's completely hosted by you and controlled by you. Okay, uh, so do you have more questions for now about QMS or commercial? Okay, there are no more questions. Um, uh, uh, there's a question that says, adding the devices manually doesn't really add them in the list when a task or config is being created. Has that been fixed? Uh, yes, and that was because when you create uh, a device and the device didn't report to QMS, that the QMS doesn't know the firmware version or the configuration version. So then the QMS doesn't know which file to assign or to be used with that device. That's why it, it was not shown in that list. Uh, we changed that, we fixed that. Uh, we recommend to always, uh, when, you, when you use the, the import, specify the, the hardware, the firmware, and the configuration version, even if it's initial, uh, but it was fixed, yes. Okay. 
it is necessary to point the device to a particular server to enable to work with the QMS. Yes, so you have the connection of the device to your backend server. That's a normal tracking platform where the all the messages are going through. Uh, for QMS, there is a different manager tool. There is a different command and you need to point the device to the IP and port of QMS server uh, when, when it's deployed for you, of course. Uh, we can offer a uh, test account in our own instance of QMS if you want to try that. If you want to test that, just please contact us and we can enable you to test QMS using our instance. Uh, it will be the same experience once it's installed on yours, but that's to allow you to test and feel uh, what's the behavior of QMS and the devices under QMS. And of course, to the discussion about uh, the installation and getting the QMS needs to be done through your sales managers. You can also send us a, a, an email and we can start that discussion. Uh, there is another question. After assigning the device group to another use, user, they still can't see that group. Why? Uh, okay, let me check that because that should be a permission issue uh, or how the roles are created. Uh, but we can, we can take a look of what is happening. If you want to contact me, we can troubleshoot that offline. Okay, there are no more questions. I will just quickly switch. Uh, okay, this is our technical support email address and our sales uh, email address. Uh, you can always uh, contact us directly. Some of you already have our uh, addresses, but I will put mine on the chat. If you want to contact me directly about the QMS uh, or uh, to, to be in touch with sales for the commercials, you can contact me directly. And this is the QR code to access the full demo video of QMS. It explains uh, it shows you a, a, a full demo from creating a user, role, organization, a device, a task, how to assign the permissions, how to create uh, uh, basically everything on QMS. So it's a very complete video. We didn't show that because it's uh, around 19 minutes long. And I just didn't want just to play and show you an email. Uh, Jim, my email is on the chat if you can. You can Get, get get it from them. Uh, so please, if you want, uh, you can have access to our QMS video. You can have full demonstration uh, of the system. And of course, follow us on LinkedIn and visit our website. So if there are no more questions uh, open, because I know we already reply around 20 questions, uh, that will be everything from my side. Uh, okay, give me one second, Jim. Uh, it's F P Castillo, C A S T I L L at I N T L dot quackunk dot com. You can contact me. Or it's easier, you can always contact FAE at quacklink.com. And every FAE on, on Quacklink will get that email. But it's an easier way to communicate with our engineering team, well, our, our technical support team. So FAE at quacklink.com. And you can contact everyone from there. Okay. So if no more questions, 
Thank you. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much for attending this. This is the first webinar we do for, for uh, North America. Uh, we had a session of uh, a season, season, uh, quoting that, uh, of six webinars for LATAM, but we are planning to do the same for, for North America. I think uh, our, market, uh, our marketing team prepared some questions for you at the end. So you can suggest or let us know if you want to keep having these sessions and you can suggest uh, some topics for the next webinars. Uh, I, I think we will not have enough time for this year, but we can plan something for next year and have these webinars. Like for Latin America, we had six, one every, every one month. So it was a, a lot of job, but everything for, for you guys. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you so much for attending. And I hope you enjoy this and you find this tool useful. Thank you guys. Thanks so much.